in this uh, reaction, we're going to look at incomplete combustion. And incomplete combustion tends to give us a mixture of one, two, or three carbon-containing compounds. Not very likely, but you might get some carbon dioxide, CO2. Uh, more likely, you're going to get carbon monoxide, which is CO and is poisonous. And there's often a clue in exam questions uh, when they want you to uh, refer to that. And also some completely unburned carbon, atomic carbon, which is carbon in its solid form. And we know that as soot. So I've got three, for instance, reactions, all using the same starting uh, compound, C12H26. And in the first one, we are asked to think what we might get and balance an equation where we get a certain amount of carbon monoxide and solid carbon particles out. We always still get enough water to take away all of the hydrogen atoms. Just like with our last reactions, we start with uh, balancing the carbon. And because this is a complete, for instance, I'm going to say we're going to get six carbon monoxide molecules out of this and six carbon atoms out of this. So that is our carbon balanced. Uh, we have 26 hydrogen atoms. So that is a total of 13 water molecules, 26 divided by 2. And now we have to balance the oxygen, which is the tricky bit here. At first, we uh, will tot up the number of oxygen atoms that we have on our product side of the slide. So we have six oxygen atoms here, none from the reaction forming carbon, and we have 13 oxygen atoms here. So that is a total of 19 oxygen atoms. 19 divided by 2 is 9 and a half oxygen molecules. So that is how we would balance that. We might, though, get a different set of products, in this case carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, and of course water, and we need to be able to balance these. In this case, again, we're starting off with C12H26 and a certain proportion of oxygen. Let's again just assume, for the sake of example, that we get six carbon dioxides, six carbon monoxides, uh, so perhaps we've got a little more oxygen than our initial uh, reaction suggested, and of course we've got some water. Again, balance the carbons, so we've done that. Next, the hydrogens, and again, they don't change, so we again have 13 water molecules. And this time, let's again tot up the total number of oxygen atoms that we have going into this reaction. Okay, if we have six CO2s, we must have 12 oxygen atoms from that reaction, six oxygen atoms from the formation of carbon monoxide, and again, 13 oxygen atoms for the reaction of or formation of water. This gives us a grand total of 31 oxygen atoms, which if we divide by 2, gives us 15 and a half oxygen molecules. So obviously our reaction, our hypothetical reaction, had a little bit more oxygen in it this time than last. Okay, let's take one more example. And here we have a reaction of the same alkane with oxygen, giving us a combination of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and again, soot, carbon atoms, as well as water. Let's balance the carbons first. And because again, we're being hypothetical, let's say we have six carbon dioxides. Let's have three carbon monoxides and we will have three carbon atoms there. That's our carbon balanced. 
So let's look at the water. Again, no change. So we have 13 water molecules. And then again, if we take the total number of oxygens that we have, 12 from the CO2, 3 from the carbon monoxide, and 13 from the uh, water, that gives us a total of 28 oxygen atoms in total, which if we divide by 2 gives us a total number of 14 oxygen molecules. It's perhaps easier to see what you're expected to do in an exam with this knowledge by looking at some past paper questions. So here are a few, starting with this one. Uh, this is part of a larger question, but uh, this particular part refers to incomplete combustion. It says, some oil-fired heaters use paraffin as a fuel. One of the compounds in paraffin is the straight-chain alkane dodecane, C12H26. The combustion of dodecane produces several products. Now we've seen that on the last slide. It says here, write an equation for the incomplete combustion of dodecane to produce gaseous products only. Now what that means, that's an important thing to look at. Gaseous products only simply means no carbon on its own, so no soot. Sometimes they uh, imply that soot uh, unreacted carbon atoms is required. Here they definitely don't want it. So as long as you write out a balanced equation which doesn't contain any carbon, you can do pretty much whatever else you want. So let's write this out. Write an e equation for the incomplete combustion of dodecane. So let's go with C12H26 plus we won't worry about the balancing at the moment. Just get the, the main part of it down plus oxygen gives us. Now, if I were you and you're sitting in an exam and it's worth one mark, don't mess about. Don't hang around either. Let's just give them carbon monoxide. That's a gaseous product. So let's just stick that in and not worry too much about it. And of course, we need water. So h 2 Oh, let's balance that and get on with the next question. So, C12, 12 carbons on this side, so we need 12 carbon monoxides. There we go, that's that out of the way. 26 uh, hydrogen atoms, 26 divided by 2 is 13. So, how many, carbon uh, how many oxygen atoms do we have? We have 12 here and we have 13 here which gives us a grand total of 25 oxygen atoms. Divide that by 2 and make sure that you leave yourself a bit more room than I did. 12 and a half oxygen molecules. Job done. Second question. Similar. Central heating fuel obtained by the fractional distillation of crude oil contains saturated hydrocarbons with the molecular formula C16H34. If the boiler for a central heating system is faulty, a poisonous gas may be produced. So there is again a clue. For during the combustion of C16H34, write an equation for the reaction that forms this poisonous gas and one other product only. OK, so they are, again, after just two uh, products. We know one of them is going to be water. And now the cue for you to think carbon monoxide is this term poisonous gas. So again, like we did in the last video, we'll write out an equation and we'll have just carbon monoxide and water. So we have C16H34 plus, and we'll leave a good amount of room in front of our oxygen molecule to make sure we've got some space for some balancing. Uh, we're going to get some carbon monoxide because it's our poisonous gas and 
water, the, other, the only other product. Balance our carbons. Okay, all 16 carbon atoms go into the carbon monoxide. So there we are. 34 divided by uh, 2. is 17 so we must have 17 h2o molecules so now we need to work back how many oxygen atoms do we have in total on this side i think that's 33 so 33 divided by 2 is 16 and a half there is our balanced equation. Good. Next. Okay, here's a slightly different take on a question that involves your knowledge of incomplete combustion. A light, which is something used in the manufacture of cement, must be made at temperatures above 1250 degrees centigrade. This means that Portland cement manufacture is a very intensive energy intensive process. In the 1950s, heavy fuel oil was used. A typical heavy fuel oil contains compounds with the molecular formula C20H42. This kind of fuel requires preheating before it can be burned. The equation for the complete combustion of C20H42 is, and it gives you that, um, and if you'll notice, we need a considerable number of oxygen molecules in order for the formation of carbon dioxide and water to form for complete combustion. So it gives you the balanced equation for a complete combustion, but it now asks you, the actual question is, suggest why combustion of the fuel oil is likely to be incomplete. Now, if you have a question like this, you are basically being asked to refer to the, like, the difficulty of being able to get sufficient oxygen in for complete combustion to occur. So for one mark, so don't hang about again, we uh, need to write something that suggests that. And this is lifted straight off the mark scheme, so that uh, would be ideal. We can say that it is difficult to supply uh, I want to write sufficient, but my handwriting is not good enough. So I'm going to write enough oxygen to allow complete combustion. So as long as you infer that it is going to be harder to get enough oxygen into that reaction, any kind of answer like that would be sufficient for you to gain that mark. Another example of something that requires a couple of written sentences. The large volume of exhaust gases from the same uh, question can cause dust to be blown out of the kiln. The amount of dust can be decreased by passing the exhaust gases through electrostatic precipitators. They sound exciting. These can produce sparks because of the high voltage. They are exciting, but also potentially really rather dangerous. So it says here, identify a gas that may be present because of incomplete combustion. Suggest why the use of electrostatic precipitators could be a hazard if this gas were present. Well, um, identify a gas that may be present because of incomplete combustion. Now, don't be smart and write carbon dioxide because that might be present. We are simply going to uh, write carbon monoxide. It is a gas, so they don't want you to write carbon or soot. OK, so identity of gas, CO. Don't bother with the name. Just give it the formula um, because that's worth one of the two marks. Now, the reason carbon monoxide, as well as being incredibly toxic, is, just like carbon dioxide at the right concentration, explosive. And so, therefore, uh, we will want to write something along the line of um, CO could explode. 
Let's give it a little exclamation mark and then we'll move on. So that is the ideal answer to that particular type of question. And that is incomplete combustion.